All right, it happened three years ago today when the Rena hit Otaiti Reef. It created the country's largest maritime environmental disaster and still toxic wreckage remains. We flew to Motiti Island to listen to people who are still fighting to restore their sacred reef. When Te Amatehaere was a little girl, they grew maize and kumara. The kina were fat, the power plentiful. You just could go, go down and get you what you want. You know, just daily. Everyone here in Lance Times helped everybody. She returned to the island in 2007, joining a community of about 40 relations, most of whom were also retired. She kept busy, kaimona was still plentiful, the life peaceful and simple, until the morning of October the 5th, 2011. The Rena was making its way into the port of Tauranga early this morning when it hit the Astrolab reef around four nautical miles north of Motiti Island. It's just like any accident where one of yours is involved and uh, and the helplessness you felt. Motiti Island was invaded by officials and media, yet with scarce resources, the locals housed and fed hundreds of volunteers from all over the world. We tried to keep control over things so that it was done the way we wanted things to be done, so we didn't forget the tikanga part. You know, it's like, this is our whenua, you come this way and you and, and you speak to us before you go before you go there which was really frustrating too sometimes and it and it caused you know some <laughs> difficulties between the the agencies but we you know it was like just come and ask and then why not but don't just go and do whatever you think you you've got a right to do because you don't in fact maritime new zealand had taken control it is very difficult to determine exactly where the oil is leaking from. It appeared to locals they were out of their depth. For days, the ship sat intact on the reef in perfectly calm waters before a storm hit, eventually spilling 234 tonnes of heavy fuel and containers into the sea. Ultimately, we are going to have to find who is responsible for uh, this accident, and they will need to be held to account. Despite the government's $47 million spend on the Rena cleanup, maritime laws say the wreck is the ship owner's responsibility. And that's where the story becomes as tangled as the toxic mess that's still sitting on the reef today. Danish shipping say it's going to cost too much and be too dangerous to remove the whole wreck. But last week, an independent report accused them of exaggerating their figures. Whatever the cost, it wouldn't be to our government or ratepayers. Remove it. Simple. Whether you have to pass another law or legislate another law, do it. Do something good for once for the people of Aotearoa. In desperation, Rangi co-opted her whanaunga buddy Mikaere to help make a claim to the Waitangi Tribunal. The subsequent draft report heavily criticised the government for agreements they made with the owners in 2012, breaching the treaty and seriously weakening any case to remove the wreck. You could surmise that the government is looking after the um, economics of the companies that come here to take our goods away. Yeah, we all accept that New Zealand needs that to happen, but why can't it happen in a safe way? And why should the interests of those foreign companies take precedence over, over us, you know, the people who live here? This is our country, this is our environment. Buddy lives on the mainland. Three years down the track, oblivious to most beachgoers, he's still picking up tiny plastic beads from the wreck, which are harmful to fish and birds. Yeah, the impact is still going on. Having the arena taken away uh, would have a huge uh, impact on lifting um, the spirits of the people, um, showing that, yeah, you can achieve justice. Soon the Mōtiti people are heading to the Environment Court, fighting against the owner's applications to leave what remains of the wreck where it is. In August, the government decided some of the wreck should be removed, some should remain. Normally the person with the most resources wins, 
was trying to sell raffles and um, uh, T-shirts uh, to, to get the resources together to, to put up, you know, a halfway decent battle. No matter what the outcome of the case, it's the legacy that concerns the Mortiti community. Now routines change, and a lot of things are probably just like parking the car in your lounge, you know. Because of where we are, geographically and, you know, spiritually and physically, unless you're of it, you don't know it. Challenged by offers of compensation and outside pressure, they hold tight to their kaitiakitanga and their determination to clear the rena from their lives. I have four grandchildren. This fight should not be left for them to continue with. It should end with me and my age group and make a better place for my grandchildren and their children's children yet unborn. Everything is for the everything is for our for our, for our children and if we if we don't do it now, well, they're going to say, well, my, my koro didn't do a good job. I think there were bigger plans for, for this place than what's been, you know, let on. But um, it's not going to happen. <laughs>